Yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see. Uh, yeah, at least some in the audience. I can understand uh, the reason. Maybe the topic is not interesting enough, but maybe also the social event is still somewhere in your, in your body or in your head. So um, to those that are here, um, good morning and nice to have you here. Um, this talk is about the Type 3 government package. Of course, you have read that already in the leaflet. And um, First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. So who is that person that is standing in front of you? Uh, my name is Oliver Harder. Um, I'm living in Germany, Bayreuth, the famous uh, Richard Wagner uh, Stadt. I'm active with Type 3 since 2005. Uh, 2007, I um, was introduced into the Type 3 core development team. Then 2008, I was the release manager of Type 3 4.7. That was the release that took at least, um, yeah, uh, two years of development, so the longest release uh, in development ever. Um, 2010, I was elected to be the leader of the Type 3 version 4 core development team. So what are we going to do today? So um, this talk is all about a government package. So it's all about web accessibility. It's about governmental websites. It's about how to get your content into the right direction and what you need to do with that. So yesterday, there already was a talk about web accessibility in general. That was uh, yesterday in the morning. That was more about the why is it important to do web accessible stuff and what do you need to do. And this talk is basically more about um, how did we do that and what are our aims to do that. So and the result of that how is actually the Type of 3 government package. So that's the things that we are going to tackle. So why, what's the background story of that all? Then the government package itself, what contents does it have? What uh, basic principles did we follow? And then, yeah, in the, in the end, uh, just a perspective how we could continue with the government package and what other packages uh, we could imagine in the future. So first of all, the why, yeah, of course, we had money, so that uh, is always an answer to the why. So there is uh, the so-called BLE project, and we have money for the Type 3 Association. Um, so BLE is a German Bundesanstalt für Landwirtschaft und Ernährung. That's the yeah, uh, organization for agriculture and stuff like that, doing agency work for a ministry in Germany. So that's all in the governmental environment. And um, yeah, we get some money from them, some great sponsoring. So we were able to um, have, I think it is about 10 developers in that BLE project that are working currently from half to full time on the whole BLE project. So we have other tasks as well. It's not only the government package, the government package is somehow the result that will be there in the end. And the general scope of that project is to improve web accessibility and the usability. So usability of the backend, how to handle um, all the content, how to handle all that meter information that we have there, and how to improve the web accessibility in the front end. So that also affects CSS style content, for example, the whole content rendering stuff and so on. Um, we had a pretty tight timeline, timeline for the whole BLE project. So it started in July this year and it will end in October this year. So we have four months of development and um, yeah, the question might uh, rise, why did the BLE give money to the Type 3 Association and not to a company? Um, because also in the background is that they want to ensure that web accessibility will stay there in the next Type 3 releases. And that's somehow not really possible if one single company is doing that because we of the Type 3 core team or we of the Type 3 community said, okay, once we have this web accessibility introduced, we want to keep that, of course, and we want also to educate others, being it the developers, designers, editors, how to create web accessible content. So that's the whole background story of um, why we have a government package in the end. Yeah, there it is, ensure continuity of enhancement in the Type of 3 core. So the BLE project um, is in general, about web accessible content rendering. So I put some hashtags there. We have in German the BITV, which is a um, derivation of the International Web Conformity Accessibility Guideline, WCHG, uh, WCAG, sorry. Um, so this is a 
basic set or a modified set of the international rules on um, web accessibility and of course put to the German laws and to the, to the German requirements. Important thing to mention here, there are two versions of that BITV. Um, one is valid right now, that's version um, 1.0. I think that's valid since uh, 1999. And since three or four years, there is a draft version that is not really finished. However, we have built our work on that new version because we expect that it will be ready yeah, maybe this year, maybe next year. However, for sure, it will be there in the end. And uh, we didn't want to start with an old version of that um, of these guidelines. Yeah. Then you also see the tag HTML5. So that's also something that we um, want to follow with the whole web accessibility uh, content rendering stuff. Then we are going to have, as another sub-project in the BLE project, a new media management and a new file abstraction layer. So if you followed the development of Typo 3.4.5, so you maybe have read something about the file abstraction layer that was integrated there, some, but however, in the end, was extracted again because it was not really finished, it was not really stable. So um, we took the chance with the BLE project again and yeah, rethought the whole concept of file abstraction and media management. So if you know DAM, the digital asset management, then you have on the, on the one hand, you have that file abstraction part, that indexing part that is able to store your files, not in the file system. Of course, you have files in the file system, but if you want to relate your files, then you use database relations. So you have multiple content elements, and they all are related to one single file, and these relations are stored in the database. That's basically the the usage of the file abstraction layer. Of course, you have some nice additions like, uh, well, you can plug in Amazon S3 storage, you can plug in any other storage provider that you want to have, all by having that centralized on the file abstraction layer. And the media management is built on top of that file abstraction layer and offers basically the functionality you know from DAM. However, in a modernized way, we have a nice view of that. We have a nice handling of this um, meta information. There are more automized tasks. So all in all, it will be better. So if you're interesting, interested in the DAM stuff as well, there is a talk this afternoon done by the developers, by Ingmar Schlecht and Fabien Utrio. Um, so that's, I think it's in this room uh, in the afternoon just as a, as a side note. Another sub-project is to have a web accessible image gallery. So uh, we try to define one gallery that hopefully will be there for the next few years at least. So not another gallery that is somewhere in the TR and not used. So we want to build the state of the art gallery that is based on the new concepts of file abstraction layer and the DIM or the media management. Yeah, we have several extensions that are required in a governmental context. So, um, yeah, they require the index search. So, sorry, of course, no, we have not the, the solar part in here. However, maybe it would be possible to also extend that to, to solar. But um, for our project, we're just tackling the index search and are going to optimize that concerning speed and concerning indexing to have a, a faster search result. So if you have a lot of data, I guess you have realized that index search somehow will be really, really slow, and um, that's something we want to tackle and solve with this sub-project. Yeah, and another thing is the glossary. There's that famous A21 glossary. It's a bit old. However, we are going to, to rework or rewrite the whole stuff because also glossary and the web accessible glossary is also a must-have in these governmental environments. And very important part is documentation. So we want to have documentation for editors, for integrators, and for designers. So what is when we are finished with the whole topic and have a government package and all these nice features there, but nobody is able to extend them? So of course, we need something for um, developers or for integrators. Then you need to integrate your content, and you must do that really carefully. And you must think about um, what do web I, or what do disabled persons need in terms of yeah the language and what do I tell and what do I describe, what do I put into the description text and stuff like that. And of course also design happens because we um, maybe you have followed the talk yesterday and it was about contrast ratio and uh, font sizes and how to arrange your blocks there. Um, so it's also important for designers. So. We just want to give out tutorials or documentations, best practices, how 
to do um, web accessible websites. So of course it's up to you then if you follow these these guidelines. So it's it's not a rule, of course. It's just a guideline, and it shall help you to create web accessible uh, websites. Yeah. Then we have another sub project. It's not really related to the web accessible um, uh, topic at all. Uh, it's more like a yeah console management tool for Type of Three. So um, if you have multiple websites and the um, BLE guys have about uh, 40 or 50 websites that are going they are going to maintain, and each time they have to yeah update a Type of Three version because there was a security release. Uh, Thankfully, um, and um, yeah, they of course need to do something. They need to update the sources, or if they want to upgrade um, from a other version, from example for 4.3 to 4.5 or 4.6, um, they need to recheck all their stuff and um, also introduce their manually um, created things on top of that what is there or, or what is delivered by the Type of 3 core. And this console management tool shall help to control or to ease the deployment of these of these sites. Um, yeah, there will be more in the end. So the console project will somehow in the end be taken out of the whole BLE project to have a console management tool for everybody. So for the whole Type of 3 community or for all Type of 3 users. Yeah, and in the end, um, if you look at the list of all that sub projects, um, they will be bundled in the government package. So the government package is basically the show off of all these features. How can you use them? How can you benefit from it? And uh, how did we think uh, it makes sense to set up web accessible websites? So that was basically um, the story about uh, the BLE project, the background story. And now, yeah, et voila. Um, what is this government package? So in the first run, because the BLE project is a German project, we use the German language for the time being. Um, so could be better in the end. We will see that in the, in the last slide then. Um, it will be similar to the introduction package, however, a bit different, whatever that means. Um, we want to follow classic and clean design and best practices. So that's what we want to do with the, with the government package. It's not another package where we show fancy stuff and new things and um, yeah, all, all on a on a emphasized level. So it's more clean, classic, functional. So that's the scope of the of the government package to yeah define a how to do things in the front end and in the back end. So. Um, yeah, basically, that's just a screenshot we are going to look into. Maybe it's a, bit, uh, a little bit too not big enough for you, I guess. Can you? Yeah, OK. Later on, we could switch to the browser to see some of these things. Or you will get some information how to actually download this government package because it's uh, available in the current version. Yeah. So what we did here, yeah, well, it's a, it's a classic design, so we have a we have a top um, element, we have an element and a header element which can be uh, yeah, added by your or uh, extended by your own logos or background images or whatever. Then we have uh, yeah, the classical three columns layout on the left side. We have the navigation menu, so it's not the um, navigation on the top, so we put it on the left side because we don't know exactly how much pages will be there. That was different in the in the introduction package. So we decided to put that to the left side. And uh, we also analyzed, of course, other web accessible sites. And there are, yeah, it's about 50% yeah, doing it on the left side and 50% doing it on, on in the top. So it's not really the way you must do it like that, but we have chosen our best practice is to put it on the, on the left side. Um, so actually, this is the home page. So we have some more content elements that we can teaser on the front page. We can teaser news articles. We can uh, teaser um, yeah, events or any other content or what is currently very important for yeah, that governmental scope of the website. Yeah, and in the end, we have the, the footer area where we can show a sitemap and other um, yeah, general information about the whole web application. So that's uh, a content page. So uh, of course, not the home page. So again, we have on the left side 
um, the menu structure. Then in the um, center column, we have the content area where we list all the stuff we want to present. And then on the right side, we have a column that might stay there all the time. So you can uh, put downloads there, you can put there important links, events, whatever. So everything that you want to know if you surf through the site and um, think about, oh, well, I read about that event, but where can I find it again? Of course, you can use the search or you can uh, look it up again in the right column. So actually, that's the, the basic, uh, simple and classic design of the, or the design elements of the government package. All right, so let's continue with the question accessible. What, what does that mean? Or what did we think that uh, web accessibility means? So uh, first of all, a um, very sim simple thing is uh, we want to lose uh, skip links for easy screen reader navigation. Um, so it's nothing more than a, a text that is around the navigation element telling this is the main navigation or this is the footer navigation. And it's not shown to the regular user because it's uh, disabled by just regular CSS stars, but it helps really for people using screen readers because they are told, well, this is your main navigation and you know that already because uh, you used it in the last page. So the, some easy principles that we want to do here. Yeah, um, by using screen readers, um, you don't have a mouse, for example, where you can point to a to an image, uh, to a link, or whatever. So you're forced to use the tabulator key on your on your computer. And just by yeah, hitting 10 times the tabulator key, you're navigating through the site. And therefore, also the, na the navigation should stay the same. So it does not make much sense to create different navigation on each side because it just looks fancy. Um, people are not used to it and will leave the site and won't feel comfortable with the whole situation. So that is also something that should be kept in mind. Um, yeah. The tabulator key is used for name, main navigation and also for content elements to um, yeah, get down a bit, go to the next article. And it's uh, yeah, just a way of thinking about uh, yeah, the tabulator key works. So if you have a website, yeah, just for fun, uh, test it, whether that works or whether you feel comfortable with, with that or if you have problems. Yeah. Yeah, of course, we should have a nice contrast radio. I say um, should have, um, since I don't think it's a, it's a must have and there are alternatives. We will come to that at a, at a later slide. Um, yeah, and the whole website shall be functional by using the browser soon. So uh, maybe you remember these um, nice tags, font size selector, or where you can increase your font size. So um, the question is, does that make sense? Nowadays, so each browser has the zoom functionality and you can use it and also um, if you require it, you just use it. So we decided not to have that font size selector, but we want to have a layout that is still functional with the website browser zoom. So that means that we won't use uh, pixels, for example, and use the EM units. Yeah, we will come to that later already. So um, yeah, and another thing of accessibility is also to have additional information on media elements. So, um, for example, if you're blind, you just cannot see that image. So it's just nothing. That's just a box with anything in it, but you need a description for it. So that is also something that we should have in mind to realize what is required, what kind of information is required right now. And if you cannot see the picture, so how do you transport the information visualized on the picture to someone that is not uh, able to see the picture? So it's just some, some basic thinking about that. Um, yeah, actually, I forgot to mention that this um, talk should have been done by two persons, by Lars Zimmermann and me. However, Lars Zimmermann has uh, got a cold and can hardly speak, so it would be really painful for you to follow him since it would be like uh, blah, 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 <coughs> blah, blah, blah. So um, unfortunately, he's not here. He is excused, and I had a phone call with him less yesterday. Um, what his design principles have been, because I'm not a designer, I'm a developer, and however, I want to share this, um, his thoughts uh, with you. So what Lars did in the beginning, he analyzed uh, other governmental websites and um, tried to find out 
a common basis how governmental or accessible websites are built. And as I already mentioned, there is no common way to do that, which shows us that we still can do a lot in this area. So we still must try out and find the best practices, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And of course, we have to communicate about that. So why did we do it like that? And not just, we've done it like that, so you can live with that, take it or leave it. Um, so it's more a process that is still not finished and won't be finished in the future. But you all, always have to keep in mind, does it make sense for somebody that is um, yeah, disabled? Um, then again, on the on the layout, layout and design, yeah, it should be looking like the or should be like the introduction package, however, but different. So, yeah, we just had to define some scopes. The introduction package um, shall be easy and simple as a type of three introduction. So, if you never used type of three before, th this should be the first step to get into type of three. Just download it, just install it, find out whether Typo 3 fits your demands or doesn't fit your demands. And not setting up a complex website, uh, getting no results and stuff like that. That was the scope of the introduction package. Um, the scope of the government package is, yeah, of course, show, to be show the best practices in web accessibility. So we, we just define that you need to have a basic knowledge of Typo 3. So you should know how content editing works. You should know about the back end. You should know about the basic concepts of Typo 3. And the government package is then put on top of that all and just shows how we are doing the stuff or how we think it is right. Um, yeah, that's the, the, the different. And if you have seen the, the blue color in the layout, so Lars was thinking about mm, which color to choose and then, yeah, it was pretty easy to take blue um, because he says it's seriously strict. Um, it's something you can rely on. Um, if you look to yeah, other governmental websites, you will often find the, the color blue or um, yeah, financial institutes or something like that often use the color blue because they want to suggest uh, it's reliable. What we are doing here with your money, it's reliable. So actually that was the impression of a designer. Okay. Yeah, and we already talked about that hori horizontal uh, versus the vertical main navigation. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's yeah the best practice for us then. Concerning the markup, um, it shall be simplified and valid, of course. So it doesn't make sense to create a markup that doesn't uh, validate with the um, W3C validator. That does not make much sense in the end. But it sh also should not be a markup that is fully blown of diffs and spans and all that uh, nasty stuff that you just use for designing your things and even go more into details. So just use a simplified but valid design. Our markup is based on the HTML5 boilerplate, um, which includes JavaScript for um, yeah, rearranging the styles and rearranging the possibilities. Um, yesterday in the talk, there was the question of, um, is JavaScript really allowed in web accessible websites? And yeah, it is, of course. So if, you're, if you turn off the JavaScript rendering in your website and say, okay, it's it looks ugly somehow, but if it's still functional, then of course your website is still accessible. It just doesn't look nice. So uh, in general, JavaScript of course is allowed in um, web accessible websites. And that's also one of the changes um, in the BITV in these guidelines I mentioned in the BITV version one and uh, BITV version two, though they became less restrictive on that uh, JavaScript part, for example. So your website just needs to be accessible. That's the, that's the thing. Okay, we used that HTML5 boilerplate and extended that a bit um, since it has already a great feature set of what we need and uh, defines how to arrange a website, how to create um, semantic information and have a, a slim, simplified, but valid structure of HTML markup code. Um, so that's really important. So you don't have to rethink the, the, the whole story and create your layout by typing HTML and waste a lot of time, you just can use the HTML5 boilerplate. And the boilerplate was already built in Type 3 version 4.5, I think, so we, we already had the, um, the basics for it. However, it was not enabled by default, so we already had it in the past. Yeah. 
using semantic information also means that we uh, use the accordant text for it. So we use a header for the, this is my header, it's not the head tag, not the, the heading, not the H1. Um, yeah, footer section, A site, navigation with the accordant roles. So it's not like putting another ID to this and that diff or using another class on that diff, whatever, that blows up your, your whole markup. It's just using semantic text. That's really important here. Yeah. And then another thing on the markup is, of course, that we need to enhance the content rendering. So all the stuff you know um, from Type of 3, from the basic Type of 3 versions um, of CSS style content, of course, needs to be changed, needs to be revalidated. And as you have seen in the beginning, we had the, one of the first projects was um, accessible content rendering. So we already tackled that inside the BLE project. And of course, that's cool for the, uh, for the government package because we can already use um, somehow uh, web accessible content rendering in Type of 3 per default. Yeah, concerning styling, um, during the development, Lars, who also did the, the markup and uh, CSS stuff, uh, used pixels during development. So um, it is easier to create positions and it's a lot of easier to deal with pixels uh, and not using that strange uh, EM units and conversions. Um, so he started with the body tag and defined that the body tag has uh, 16 pixels, which equals or which is the same as one EM. And then the default content block uh, should have 12 pixels, which equals um, 0.75 EM. And that's the way how he continues by just defining one EM and then he goes down. And you, already, you also have to keep in mind that these EM units are nested. So try to style the deepest nested element. So for example, if this is the, the markup, you start at the body element, uh, has 16 pixels, then the diff maybe has these uh, 12 pixels or uh, 0.75 EM. And then this diff with the glass, just rendering a box, don't, don't use any pixel units on it, but rather use it on the P tag, uh, on your paragraph, and try to use the the, the size manipulation, font size manipulation on that tag. So try to use the deepest tag in there. So, and if that was layouted, of course, then uh, with pixel units, then he did the EM conversion. So once everything was done. So it's much easier to do that in the end than um, starting with EM from the beginning and then uh, see, okay, that does not work. Now I have to take my calculator again and uh, convert all these numbers. Yeah, that's just a one of the best practices of the designer or the, the markup designer. Yeah, then some general best practices, as I already mentioned in the beginning, um, we had that font size selector. So the browser can do that. So we are just, we still have that link. That's the funny thing. We still have a font size um, yeah, image there and, and then click on it and you will get just a pop-up, a hint use your browser soon because your browser is capable of doing that. So why reinventing the wheel so the browser is capable of doing that? Another thing is to use easy to understand language. So it doesn't make much sense, uh, especially not in governmental environments, uh, if you have a full blown of text and it's very complicated and nobody does really understand what's written there. So um, that's something we want to do. And of course, uh, you as editors or whatever you do in your company should, should take care of. Use easy to understand language. If something isn't really understandable, then also other people might not understand that if, in, if they don't have a whatever Harvard University degree or whatever, so easy to understand language. Um, that also means, of course, we might have complex content, but additionally to that, we are going to have a summary of all what is written on that page, all that complex stuff, just summarized in an easy and understandable way. So it's a, an addition to, a, to one page, for example. Then the contrast ratio. Um, yeah, I think there's the rule of the a contrast ratio of 4.5 to 1, something like that, and it's really difficult to do that um, by having a nice layout. So what we are going to do um, 
we use a contrast enhanced representation. So if you remember this, this uh, print preview pages um, that you maybe had in type of three with um, the type num equals five, whatever is going to re-render your whole page, however, in, a, in another way, so stripping away the menu, not doing that by CSS, I mean, so stripping away the menu, not showing the header at all and stuff like that, um, we can use a representation of the same page by just using a different CSS, all right, uh, and um, yeah, having a black and white version of that page. So it is not required to put everything uh, in, in, in web accessibility into one layout. That will never work. So it's just about thinking what are the alternatives, what makes sense. Uh, that's an old one, okay. So concerning the um, contest view, so that's basically the regular website. And then, on the other hand, you just have a black and white representation. Of course, that's what's, what's just done in Photoshop. The, the real site is not ready yet. So, but then you just use black on white and have the contrast enhanced or the contrast scale enhanced. So, and this is enough. That this, this works. So, um, of course, it would not, have, would not have been possible to put that in the blue layout on the left side. And yeah, some basic requirements that you have to keep in mind if you do web accessible pages and what we try to keep in mind. Um, yeah, first of all, it's about thinking about the uh, uh, disabilities. So what does that mean? What kind of disabilities do we, are we talking about? So it's not about reading a guideline. Uh, I have to do this and that. It's about what makes sense for a user. So it's something like a poor eyesight or if you are blind, then of course you will need the zoom behavior of your browser, uh, or maybe you use screen readers that are going to read the text that is, yeah, somehow printed or visualized in your in your in your website. Um, it maybe also could be about a reduced intellectual grasp. So that is the thing with the with the complex content. If you don't understand what is written there, then it doesn't make sense. So try to use simple language, or at least try to use a summary of all that was um, written there in a, in a complex form. Um, then maybe you can be locomotory impaired. So um, if you cannot use a mouse, but can see and can understand everything, however, cannot use a mouse, so what are you going to do? There are also alternatives. Uh, maybe something, of course, if you don't have both arms, then it's um, bad, but there are alternatives for that. You can control or you have something like a keyboard that you can control with your feet or with your knees or something like that. Just think about that, what, what that means. So tap navigation is, the, is one of the solutions here. And yeah, additional content, of course, is also important. So if you have uh, a media element, like an image, for example, you need a proper description for that, what's going on on that image. and. Um, if you have video elements, um, then you have a lot of motion in that video and you wanna, you wanna share an impression of a situation. Um, however, if you cannot see the pictures, then you need to have a good audio description for that, uh, understandable and good audio description that shares the same impression of what is represented in the video. So, all right, um, I'm finally coming to an end. So uh, the government package uh, will be part or uh, the work we are doing with the BLE project will be tackled for Type 3 4.7, which shall be released or will be released in April 2012. Um, however, uh, since we must be finished by end of October, we already have some results and we are also going to share these results with you. So once Type 3 4.6 is released, which will be on uh, October, uh, the 25th, I think, Xavier, yeah, we. Oui. And um, after that, uh, we can finally switch to the development of 4.7 and we have early alpha versions and have also early versions of the government package. So you can expect something in the next few weeks or months of that government package and you can already try that out and think about and of course give feedback what you like or dislike or maybe what you uh, would consider to be important. And um, yeah, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the package is in German generally. So 
Um, they are aims to have a European government package. So concerning the language, I don't think that this is a big deal. However, in Germany, we have these BITV guidelines that forces us to follow German law. So however, um, it's a bit different in the Netherlands, I guess, or it's a bit different in whatever, UK or Spain or wherever you're coming from. So if you want to do something like that, we need feedback. We need your feedback, of course, and uh, we need to know how is web accessibility dealt with in your country and what are the guidelines. Yeah, and then there, there are other ideas to have other web accessible packages, not only for the governmental approach, but maybe also for on an educational level. So for universities, for example, uh, which also have to deal with, with web accessibility. However, the content and the scope is a bit different. Yeah. However, we need you for that. We need the Type 3 community to get feedback on all the things that we planned on top of the BLE project. So here are some, some links. So if you Google for the BLE project, for example, or link, look that up on uh, yeah, forgetype3.org, you will find something. Uh, in the end, of course, these slides will also be published and um, I hope somehow linked on the Type 3 Con 11 website um, so you can download these slides and find the links again. And uh, of course, if you have uh, questions that appear in the next few days or weeks or have ideas on these packages um, somewhere in December, I don't know, just get in contact with me. Yeah, or just write to info at typo3.org and they are going to forward the mail to the accordant persons then. All right, that's it. So are there any questions? I'm going back to the previous slide so you can write down the links. So questions. Has a uh, SEO, search engine optimization, been a theme? I'm asking because um, yesterday I heard, and from my own practice, I know accessibility is also in some kind doing SEO. But I also know that uh, you have to decide a little bit if you do mm -hmm. accessibility or SEO, because uh, in some way there can be conflicts. Has this also been a, a part of your thoughts or a theme that you're going to treat? Uh, not really. So, one thing that you need to think you need to think about is you have um, somehow that semantical structures by by using HTML5 text. So you are forced to use semantics and al already think about your structure um, bef before you add content to that. Um, so maybe that already helps a bit. However. Um, there is actually one thing. So there's one trick in, in SEO in enhancement. You put the main content on top of your markup and then you have the header and footer and just uh, um, change the positions by using CSS style sheets. So um, it's a bit strange for screen readers to start with the content and then have the navigation at the, at the bottom. So you have to hit the tabulator key a thousand times and finally are able to, to navigate. So that's something that is different. Um, to be honest, we didn't think much about uh, search, uh, search engine optimization yet. Um, that's something we, we need to, to find out or to test again whether this helps or does not help. However, um, my first impression is that it is a bit worse because of those tricks that I, that I mentioned by, by rearranging the, the columns on top and uh, using navigation on the, on the footer. So I guess there will be some more work required. So here's another question. Um, do uh, I always have a problem um, with the pixel and EM-based layouts um, in con convincing other web designers to do uh, to use EM-based layouts? <laughs> okay. Um, isn't it true that modern browsers can also scale pixel-based layouts? Well, I'm, I'm actually not a markup designer, but yeah, until a certain degree, they can do that. But you will run into problems if you use uh, box layouts or margins, and it, at some point, it might look ugly. So, um, yeah, I don't know whether some other designer can answer the given proper answer on that question. Um, 
I, I don't think uh, that uh, using EM per default is a good way. So I think using the EM is one of the best practices. However, I cannot um, fully answer your question and cannot say, okay, does not make sense or does not, or another way would be better. Yeah. You, may, you have um, basically in browsers, you have two different um, versions of Zoom function mm -hmm. um, with text or without, uh, only text or the whole page. And um, if you scale, uh, if you zoom the uh, only text, and have boxes like maybe the sidebar um, size with pixels, you run into problems as the text grows, but the, um, the size of the sidebar doesn't grow with the whole page. And that's where you run into problems if you um, start with pixels. All right, thank you. I have a question too, maybe. <laughs> yeah, the, um, um, working with um, semantic um, markup, um, you you own, not only have um, these structures like head and footer and mm -hmm. um, uh, content um, f for on, on page level, but also on um, um, content level, as you have maybe an, an article or several articles. How do you enable this um, selection of these semantic tags for the editors so that they, they can decide, okay, in this article, this part is the header and this part is the footer and this is side information? In the in the current in, in the current government package, it's not possible to select um, one of these things. So um, it's on the one hand used automatically. So, for example, in CSS style content or in the regular content elements. Um, so we had this. Uh, we we decided to use the header and then the H1, which somehow does not feel good. However, it is also one of the practices, so we need to re-validate that again. However, it would be allowed by, by the validator and stuff like that. Um, so the first level is, of course, your markup design, where you define uh, how to deal with that in a general way. And then you have the CSS style content that can be changed on a um, on an administrational level. So the integrator can design what kind of elements uh, can you use with that. However, it's not built in, in the rich text editor, for example. But um, yeah, there are plans to do that. However, we need to do that right in the end. So um, we decided to have that, again, simple and only for those things we defined and uh, for, the, for the stuff we defined in CSS style content. And that's all, basically. So there's no, no custom um, usage of these um, new tags. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for attending. Olivier, can we do that later on? So I, I was told to, to be finished, and actually I'm over the time already. A small question, okay. A very small question. Will it come with a built-in Late Muchacho support? Yeah, late muchacho support is, of course, integrated by default. Thank you.